Hey YouTubers, my name is Eric Gutierrez, as always, the bit player. Before we get started in my review on Senra Kagura S12 Versus, I want to let you guys know that this game has a lot of fan service, which at times can be seen as a lot, but I think it's okay. This game doesn't add fan service just to add it. It takes the idea and runs with it. And if you guys stay through this review, hopefully you guys see that this series has something to offer. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin this review. Let me give you a little background info on the series. Senran Kagura is developed versus it's the sixth game in the series. There are three games in the main series that are in the 3DS, another one is a spin-off rhythm game based on the cooking, and the last two are sub-series, the newest one of which I'll be reviewing today. Throughout all six games, this series has a mass of large sum of characters, 34 to be exact. That's two less than Super Smash Bros. Brawl roster. The story for this game is that a group of girls from four different shinobi schools that at this point in the series know each other and are rivals have been transported into this magical paradise island in a parallel dimension by a mysterious mistress who is also the grandmother of one of those shinobi girls. In this island, the girls find their loved ones that they have lost alive again. The mistress reveals that she has brought these girls to participate in the shinobi bond dance where all four rival schools plus one new group must face off. And the winning school will earn the highest secret of the shinobi lore and will have the honor of laying their loved ones to rest. Senor Kagura Estival vs is the second game I played in the series. The first one was the previous installment, Senor Kagura Shinobi vs. And honestly, I loved the way the story was told in Shinobi vs. In Shinobi vs you played four different stories that told the story in the eyes of each shinobi school. And I like that because for someone new to the series, there's a lot of characters to get to know and when they broke it down to the perspective of each school, I really got to know the girls of each school and their struggle. Now in Estival vs, it's all one huge story which can be overwhelming and make the characters not important and their struggles forgettable. A small issue I had with this game was how unfriendly this game is to new people to the series. And I'm only saying that because the previous game did this. And that's giving us background info on the previous games. The prequel gave us info on character, school, and etc. by highlighting special text. And then when pressed, will give you background info relating to that text. And I think it's a shame because it could have been used as a refresher for someone who hasn't played the series in a while. Or for someone like me, where this is the second game I played and they talk about something that happened in a different game. I would love to talk about the characters in this game, but there's just so many. Like I said, there's a total of 34 characters in this game. What I do like what this game does with their characters is give them their own characteristics, attacks, and weapons to make them stand out. And even though they all share the same combo, their attacks different in speed and range. And as extra content to play and a way to get to know each character more, you can unlock small missions revolving each character called the Shinobi Girl's Heart. Now to the important part, and that's the gameplay. This game is a beat em up and not a bad beat em up at all. Like I said earlier, each character has the same button combo, some are faster, some have longer range, and some are stronger. In this game you have three different fighting styles that each character has. You have the flash style, which is the one you'll always start with. Nothing special about this style, but there is a downside, and that's that you can't use the girl's special moves. The second style is called Yang style. In this style you get to use the girl's special abilities, and once transformed, your health refills, so if you plan it right, it can save you from a pinch. The last style, Yin, has the girls change into the lingerie when transformed, but you can always change this to wear regular clothes. While in the Yin style, you can use special abilities, but your health does not refill. The bright side, your attacks get increased, but your defense sucks, so it's a double-edged sword. You can level up each style for each girl by of course using the style a lot. Now the missions in this game are simple, and just depending on the mission, you start and finish with a boss battle with another shinobi girl. On other missions, you would have to go around the level and defeat father enemies until you get to the boss character. These missions are very simple, but the game switches it up by adding multiple girls to face at once or at a time. One of the cool things they added to this game was adding a teammate you can fight with, and it really helps out with clearing the fathers and fighting the boss. There's not many things you can do with your teammate. One is do an air combo, the thing that's not cool is that there's very few levels that let you have a teammate. There are extra things you can do in this game besides the main story and the shinobi girl's heart story. 
There's special messages you can play, although there's nothing special about them. Just think of them as side stories. There is an online mode, but for whatever reason I could never find a room to play and it happened to me multiple times. But from the looks of it, it looks like the prequel where you pick a character and fight someone else, like you would with a boss character. There is a ton of stuff you can unlock, mostly just clothes and accessories you can use to decorate your favorite character. And for anyone interested, there is a panorama mode you can play around with and do whatever you like with that. One of the things I like that this game changed from its sequel is the animation that would happen after a main character would take a certain amount of damage. But what happened twice is that their clothes would tear down, so you have to see this animation twice and it takes you out of the game. What really made it worse is that since they always transform into a style, their clothes get changed, so you have to see the two animations again before you defeat them. Luckily in this game you can turn off that notification. Honestly, I don't know, I'm kinda torn. I feel like this game didn't live up to what I expected it to be, and don't get me wrong, it's not a bad game. I still think it's a fairly decent game and I enjoyed playing it. And there's a lot of stuff you can do in this game. This game did fix a few problems I had with the previous installment and there's honestly nothing wrong or broken about this game. I know fans of the series are definitely getting this game and if you have the slightest interest in the series, I want to recommend you guys Cinema Kagura Shinobi Versus because of the info you might not know about. And that's it for today guys. If you like this kind of video, let me know in the bottom section down below, comment section down below. And if you want, you don't have to, you can like, share with friends, and subscribe. Subscribe. And again, thank you for watching these videos. I like doing them. And that's it for today. Till next time.